Thank you, everyone. Can you hear me all right, also in the back rows? Okay, nice. So yeah, I'm Martin Pitt. I work in uh, a Red Hat's cockpit team. And yeah, I'm glad that so many of you made it here at this early hour, even though I'm competing against Dan Walsh. So welcome to DEF CON, I suppose. Yeah. So I want to start this with a 10 second history of cloud computing. At the beginning, we had infrastructure as a service, AKA my other computer is a data center. Then later on, we got platform as a service, so this was stuff like OpenShift or OpenStack to manage all these extra computers that you had. And on top of that, then we got software as a service. So for example, we don't host our own repos anymore, like everyone just uses GitHub. But ultimately, undeniably, the pinnacle of evolution <laughs> is cockpit continuous integration and deployment as a service. And obviously, it cannot get any better because you would just run out of breath trying to pronounce it. And this, what I, this is what I want to introduce today. But let's start with the, with the first word, cockpit. So I hear that there are still people around who don't know what it is, so let me quickly introduce that. Conceptually, cockpit is a Linux session that runs in your web browser. So technically, it's very similar to what happens when you log into your machine with SSH or on the virtual, machine, uh, virtual terminal, or if you have a, a desktop, then log into GDM, into GNOME. So this is like yet another way to work with your server. And it is aimed at administrators which are new to Linux. For example, they come from the Windows world and they are familiar with the, uh, like with the concepts of system administration, but not necessarily with the Linux terminology. But it's also appealing for experienced administrators, particularly for doing um, infrequent tasks, like if you only set up a radio array once a year, like you're really not going to remember all the command line for it. And it's much simpler and safer to do it in a graphical UI in a guided way. And thirdly, it is a great troubleshooting tool. So whenever you have a bunch of machines, you can drill down into to the cockpit interface and into all the details and see what is wrong with this machine. And it is just an apt or yum or DNF install away from like all the major distros, Fedora, Atomic, RHEL, Debian, Ubuntu, Arch, and others. <clears throat> so what does it look like? So this is the system page. It gives you summary information about your system. Of course, you can drill down into a lot of extra details here. And the menu on the left, that shows you like the available administration pages. And you can also switch between multiple machines here. For example, this is a subpage. Ooh. Anyway, this is a subpage of networking, which allows you to control the firewall. It's a UI for firewall D. Or you can interact with your local libvirt or overt virtual machines and get consoles and configure disks and so on. And the cockpit team maintains all of these pages that you see in the menu here. But of course, there will always be things that are missing for your use case. So Cockpit uh, was designed from the ground up to be extensible. And we do this by offering a JavaScript API, which you can include in your page. And this offers you APIs to, um, to do stuff on the connected machine, like run a program or connect to a Dbus service or open files and sockets and like all the things you need to implement functionality. <clears throat> So a very little example, often cited, we want to create a UI for ping. So we could whip up a little address. So we set up an address input line and a button to well, actually do it. And here we have a, a little summary status, whether it succeeded or failed, and a little pre where we can watch the output. And we can wire this to the cockpit API. So this is the interesting bit here. So we can use cockpit spawn to run a program. And whenever something happens in standard out, we can output it to our uh, like streaming element. And whenever the process finishes, then we set like the status field. Of course, this is slightly simplified. So for a course, the error handling case is missing. Uh, but this is the gist of it. And so there's a very similar structure for like doing a Dbus call or opening a file, for example. So initially, it looks like this. You have a new menu entry here. You see our input line, you click on ping, and you see the result. And yeah, so it's mostly what you expect. And it appears in that menu with a very little declaration thing, which we call the manifest, but it's not terribly interesting here. And 
this is actually good enough if you want to set up like a little page for your own personal environment. Like you have a company specific page or you want to have a very cheap way of monitoring or controlling your service in your household or whatever. But as Cockpit has become more, more popular, like, uh, and there is more and more extension projects which are public, um, uh, these projects, they become much larger than this little toy example. For example, uh, there is now a UI for Podman, or we have a user interface for building installable images, um, or operating system images, which is called Cockpit Composer. Or there's user interfaces for setting up an IPA server or Fleet Commander. There's been ideas floating around for setting up an NFS server or certificate management and so on. <clears throat> and if you do this scale, then just tossing all of your code into a single HTML is just not good enough anymore. So in such like public, public and officially supported projects, you want to have a clean separation of HTML and CSS and JavaScript, put, uh, split them into multiple different modules. And of course, you don't want to cobble together the UI by hand. You want to use modern frameworks like React and Patternfly. And once you do this, then you need a whole JavaScript tool chain to compile all your files into essentially a blob that the user can understand. And these build systems, they get very complex very quickly. And even for experienced developers, it's a big annoyance to set, up, set them up. And once you have this, you also want automatic browser tests to make sure that your, uh, your project keeps running over time and you want to test it on various operating systems. And also you want to make sure that doing a release is very cheap so that you can do it very often. So essentially push button release process. And putting all of that together is a daunting task, and we know that. And it might help, uh, might prevent you from uh, like starting this project. So we came up with a project to help you with all this, which we call the starter kit. And this does all the glory that I was just talking about, with you having any, with you not having to do like a thing and with, without having to learn about all these gory JavaScript toolchain projects. So it is essentially a collection of best practices for modern JavaScript and for cockpit uh, development. And it provides a little example UI, which you can just clone and then rename and you can start hacking on the React pages and the code without having to worry about all the boilerplates. And so for example, you can run make devel install to run it straight out of your build tree. Or you can, of course, do make install to put it into user local, or you can build an RPM and then install that. And whichever way you decide to do, if you do this, then you get a UI like this. Of course, that's like rather boring, looks unspectacular, but it already demonstrates like the core thing of what you want to do on a cockpit page. So for example, this uses a cockpit.file call to read Etsy hostname and then show it on the page. And so, the idea is that it's ready to hack on React component and you can then build whatever you like without having to worry about the tool chain or testing. And testing is a good, uh, a good keyword here because this is something that a lot of projects also struggle with. And this is also why the starter kit contains, one of, uh, contains a browser integration test. So again, if you run make check here, that looks very simple but it does a lot of stuff for you in the, uh, behind the curtain. For example, it downloads an appropriate operating system image from our servers, like in this case, it's RHEL 7.6, but we have like lots of images for Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, CentOS, you name it. And it builds your code, installs it into that virtual machine, starts a headless Chromium browser, and runs your test there, and then gives you back the result. <laughs> And this reuses the virtual machines that we use in the cockpit team ourselves to test our own product. Uh, yeah, own product. And believe me, it's a half-time job to maintain all these. So if you possibly can, then reuse these images instead of trying to maintain your own. Thanks. <clears throat> and so, of course, once you have these tests, you also want to integrate them into uh, your CI. So, for example, when your project gets a new pull request, you want to make sure that these tests actually run. And you can actually do this. So we offer it to projects to run your tests on our infrastructure. Of course, uh, you have to go talk to us first so that we make sure that your project is reasonably sane. And of course, we need to control like, what kind of workloads goes on our infrastructure. 
But yeah, if you ask us nicely, we will figure this out for you. <clears throat> and the next step would be the automatic release process. So the idea of uh, how we do releases in the corporate world is essentially that you come up with the small list of changes and then put them into a signed tag on your project, push it, and then everything else happens automatically. Uh, like, for example, uh, building release tarballs, putting them on GitHub, building a source RPM, pushing them to Fedora or Coper, or updating your project page for the latest documentation and whatnot, or pushing an image to Docker Hub. And we have a lot of little helper scripts which uh, can help you with that. So for example, this is, and, and, and this is controlled by a, a little like shell script uh, which we call Cockpitches Release, and that needs to be in your project. And with that, you can tell the release machinery like to which targets you want to release your project. So the real file has lots of comments, of course, but I hope if you look at it, you should get the gist of uh, what is possible. And just like with CI, I mean, you, you, you are welcome to run this on our infrastructure. If you talk to us, and we can set this up for you, so help you with set up the webhook for your project, and as soon as you push the tag, we split the release out for you. But unlike with uh, running the tests, this part is actually uh, relatively easy to self-host, if you prefer that. Like, in essence, it's just a container with a bunch of tools that you need for doing all this and a bunch of credentials so that you can upload stuff to Copo and GitHub and whatnot. And if you want, you can just run this on your own laptop as well. So push the tag and then just run like cockpit release runner, point it to this control script, and it will do that for you as well. <coughs> and if you do this, you get also some extra bonus. So in the cockpit team itself, we do a lot of routine maintenance tasks uh, in an automated way. For example, you want to regularly update, uh, keep your NPM dependencies up to date to pick up bug fixes and security updates. Or you often need to upload the latest translation templates to Zonata, like the translation platform. Or, and of course, download the latest translations into your project so that you can actually use them. <coughs> and we have bots for all of that. So this is an example uh, that a bot did against starter kit itself. So we see uh, there was a new React package available, and so the bot comes along and updates the version of React in our package JSON, and then runs the test against it, and we see it's all hunky-dory. And then in the end, the human person can come along and say, yeah, this looks sane, or maybe, well, this was pattern fly, it might have a uh, visual impact, so let's give it another manual test, and then sign off and land. So it's basically the, the minimum human involvement to keep your, your, your project alive and healthy. Excuse me. <coughs> so, and this, uh, this is not a pipe dream. So the, we have a bunch of projects which are real life, which use all this machinery. For example, as I said, Cockpit Composer or Podman or S3, they all use that, independent projects which make use of our infrastructure. Okay. <laughs> so, and let's add your project to that list. So, the idea from our team is that we can only scale so much. So, we cannot become experts in like for all the subsystems and technology in the world, but instead from building all the UIs ourselves, we want to help you with uh, building your UI for your project. And so, we work a lot on our CI infrastructure to make sure that it's scalable and generic to other projects and we do cross-project testing. And of course, we are very happy to work with you to set all of this up with you. So if you want to talk to us, so we usually hang out in Hash Cockpit on Freenode, and our project homepage has pointers to the mailing list and to lots of documentation and tutorials. And of course, while we are here, please come and join us in person. So we have a Hackfest uh, that happens Sunday, 14.30. So it's not that long, so actually it's more like a meet and greet, but still, please tell us about your project and ideas, and we can answer your questions there. Also, uh, we are currently doing uh, user interface, uh, uh, user testing. So if you want to go down the hall and meet the lovely people there, like Mary and Jen, for example, you can also help us with improving the uh, current user experience with Cockpit and Composer itself. And just say hello. Well, thanks for your attention. 
So we still have some minutes for questions left. So are there any? Um, hey, hold on, microphone? Do you want to go? Okay. Um, can I build something besides React? So for example, if my plugin would be written with Vue, would that be an option where I have to start changing my, my packaging and my NPM scripts? Of course, I mean, you are not tied to any of the choices we make in the starter kit. So if you use like Angular or any, or any other technology, you are of course very welcome to do this. It's just the starter kit as an example React component, but I mean, it's like 10 lines of code. So, and even in Cockpit itself, we have, like you see the history of JavaScript development there. We have jQuery, we have Angular, we have React and whatnot. So, uh, you can change the frameworks you work on. You can also change the test frameworks you work on. Like if you don't want to use our uh, test API for controlling the browser uh, and the different one, so you are happy to help this. Uh, to, you're welcome to do this. And in fact, we also, uh, we have even tested this with a couple of other frameworks. Of course, we know our stuff the best, so if you have questions about that, we are best able to help you. But, yeah. <clears throat> you have a question. <laughs> Is Cockpit a Linux session in your web browser? <laughs> <laughs> Not only in mine, also in yours. <laughs> Didn't I mention that? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, thanks, Steph. So, anyone else? Okay, well then, if not, then thanks for your attention, and feel free to grab me in all of it. <laughs>